Well, it's that time of the year again where Windows 10 gets a somewhat major update. They do this about every six months, so twice a year. And this time, the major new build number is 1909. And interestingly, this time, Microsoft didn't release a big major feature updates with lots of new visual features and stuff that you might necessarily notice. It's more of a service pack type update with a lot of behind the scenes stuff and a lot of quality of life and quality updates to the operating system. So there might not be a lot of major new features, but there are still some minor ones that you might notice, so it's still worth going over them so you know what's going on. Now the first big change you'll probably notice is how the update itself is actually delivered. So usually what would happen is with these semi-annual major updates, they would pretty much just install automatically, and obviously Microsoft had a lot of issues in the past with some things breaking. There was that one catastrophe where files were getting deleted. So Microsoft actually kind of wised up and made it so now these semi-annual every six months major updates are actually optional to a point. So now every time one of these major updates becomes available, now in the Windows Update settings, you'll see that it actually shows up as optional. So if you check for updates, it won't actually install this update unless you specifically go to the optional part. And you can see specifically it says optional updates available, and then you can click to download and install it, and then that will actually install the major update. Now one big thing to keep in mind is the update will only be optional so long as your current major build of Windows 10 is still under support, which usually lasts about 18 months. So I believe that would make the last one 1803, which was from the beginning of last year. So if you do have that version of Windows after that falls out of support, you will be automatically upgraded to 1909. So you can basically put off these major updates for about 18 months and then it will force you to update. Now, I think that's a lot better system because hopefully after 18 months, you would think that the kinks would be completely worked out. So now you can rest assured that you won't be forced to update to these major new versions if you don't want to. And this also may be the start of a new update schedule that Windows 10 will go on from now on where there's a major new feature update in the first half of the year and then more of a quality of life service pack type update in the second half of the year like this one is. We'll have to see how that plays out over the next few years. But anyway, let's get into these new features and some changes in this new version. So the first new feature change has to do with the Windows Sandbox. So that was released in a previous build, I believe the most recent major one. And now it allows you to have a little bit more control over the actual isolation and the sandbox. So for example, you can actually have a different version of Windows 10 running in the sandbox to test things out than the host version. So I haven't actually tested this out myself because my computer does not play well with virtualization, but this could theoretically mean that maybe you're running a different build in the sandbox, which might be helpful if you're a developer. One feature you might notice is if you bring up the calendar, you click on the time and bring up the calendar, there's now a new option in the flyout menu to add a calendar event right there. You can just click on that, add an event on a date right from that. Also, there have been a few different changes to notifications. So for example, you can actually disable notifications from specific apps and websites in the notification bar when it pops out. There's like a little gear and then you can just turn that off. And also there's gonna be a manage notifications button at the top of the action center that will bring up the notifications and actions setting page. So you don't have to like navigate through the settings anymore. You can take it from right there. Another change is that when you do a search now from Windows Explorer, it'll be a little bit different. So it'll actually use the same search as the taskbar search, like the Windows search it's called. So now you'll be able to see files that are not just locally stored, but also from the cloud, like through OneDrive, like Office 365, whatever. Before, I guess that would not show up if you search through Explorer, only through the start menu taskbar. So now you'll get consistent results between the two. And also if you click in the search bar, it'll now show most recently searched for things in there that'll pop up. One small change to the start menu is now when you bring it up and you hover over those left side buttons, it'll now just expand out to show what those buttons are. Now, one significant feature that was added is support for third-party virtual assistants to the start menu. Now, I don't believe this has been taken advantage of by any of these, but this theoretically could mean that like the Google Assistant or Amazon Echo will be able to be added to your Windows 10 start menu, not just Cortana or whatever. And I believe the Amazon Echo is probably gonna be the first one I've heard that will be doing this. There's also been some performance improvements. So for example, now Windows 10 will apparently better distribute workloads over the CPU's favored cores. 
This is all automatic. It goes on in the background, so you don't have to worry about it, but you could see a performance increase theoretically. You might not notice it, but whatever. And also apparently certain processors will have better power management. So probably this is gonna count only towards laptops, but you might see an improvement in battery life. Then there was also some enterprise level features that most consumers are gonna not give a crap about at all. For example, in Windows 10 S, which I've talked about in the past, is like a really locked down version that normally would only allow uh, Microsoft Store apps to be running. Now it will allow you to set a policy in enterprise that would allow some Win32 apps to run even on Windows 10 S. And also they improved security on ARM64 devices by now allowing the Windows Defender Credential Guard to run on ARM64. Another feature that's more enterprise side of things is that the Windows Virtual Desktop feature, which allows you to basically run some apps and entire versions of Windows from the cloud with Azure, is generally available. So you can pretty much run that, I think, and in any case, I guess there were restrictions on it before, but now if you want to do that, you can. And then they actually removed some features, but none of them are really significant. For example, they're apparently removing the My People uh, in the shell or the taskbar. That was a thing they were doing for a while. I guess they're going to be depreciating that or removing it all together very soon. And then there was other stuff like package state management. Oh no, not package state management, anything but that. Stuff we don't really care about. And that's pretty much actually it. So not a lot, even considering this was a so-called major update. There probably was a lot of bug fixes in the background, but I don't think anything that they've really talked about is going to be a really eye-opening. So hopefully this means it's a probably safe upgrade, considering it was mostly focused on bug fixes anyway. So it would be a real screw up if you updated to it and then it broke. Usually I say it's probably better to wait on these major updates. Even this one, that's probably not a bad idea, but really it's up to you. So anyway, enough of that, but a video I did make recently that was pretty fun that I recommend watching next was what happens if you delete the Windows folder, the Windows directory while Windows is running. It was a pretty fun experiment, so you'll just be able to click on that pop out right there. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.